Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bloom Conversations. I'm Claire Dewhurst. I'm the director of City Nation Place, which is the global forum for place branding and place marketing. I'm honoured that Bloom Consulting has invited me to join these podcast sessions just to introduce the discussions. I see my job as asking the questions on behalf of you to ensure that we learn the most from the Bloom experts and their guest speakers. This podcast series has been launched to celebrate Bloom's 20th anniversary, Happy Birthday Bloom. And throughout the series, we'll be diving into the world of nation branding and place branding. So today we're going to be focusing on the sixth step to nation branding, which is all about defining your central idea. And I'm delighted that we have with us today, Jose Torres, who is the Chief Executive of Bloom Consulting, and also Peter Kenty, who is the Chief Executive of Eindhoven 365 which is the organisation that's charged with building awareness and reputation for the Dutch city of Eindhoven. So welcome both of you. Really nice to see you both. Jose, shall we start with you? What do you mean by defining your central idea? Thank you, Claire. So basically, this is one of the most important and crucial steps in any nation brand or city brand project, which is really about understanding how we want to be perceived. What is that we're trying to build as a nation or as a city? What is the ultimate goal? And the central idea is the building block of everything, is the backbone of the strategy. So, you know, if a city wants to work on, on its perception or a country also wants to work on its perception, it needs to focus on really understanding what they, they what, it's not so much what they're trying to say, but how they want to be perceived. Because in the end, the central idea should not be communicated contrary to what many people may think. And, and this is a step that we are very proud. We are the founders of this step and we're the founders of the central idea concept. But really the central idea is not a slogan. It's a little bit like if you name it, you break it, right? And, and so this is the interesting challenge is how do we want to be perceived? What is that when they see or they hear something about the country or the city, what emotion what idea pops into their mind. And that's really what the central idea is all about. Well, I think we've got the right person here to talk about that, because from what I know of Eindhoven, there is a very strong core central idea to the city branding project and on process. So Peter, will you share a little bit about that, how you started and how you came across or you know decided on your central idea at the beginning of your process in Eindhoven? Yeah, do you want the long or the short answer? <laughs> oh, I think we want the medium answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think with everything that everything has, of course, is a story of its of its heritage. And for me, I'm I'm trained as a marketer and, tra and uh, a graphic designer. I worked many years in advertising, digital advertising, sports, and then I was asked to do the city marketing of Eindhoven. And for me, that was actually quite interesting to see. What you say, how do you find this, this central idea? What is your positioning? What sets you apart? In the beginning, I really struggled with that because you, you tend to focus on values. What a lot of brands do, they go for the brand values. And to my astonishment, that actually didn't work for the city because all these values are very, I would say, the same. So the city, of course, you strive to be sustainable, you strive to be open, you strive to be modern, you strive to be sympathetic. And then if you then close your eyes and do you then think of Eindhoven or London or a, a tiny village in Cornwall? So actually these values don't discriminate in, in the positive sense. So then we actually started looking at what does set apart, which is much more your mentality or your heritage that you have from trade or from industry. And Eindhoven has a huge history in, of course, in technology, but it has something as special together with that, and that's its design focus. And we asked actually our citizens in a, in a quite a, a lengthy process to make a choice on what kind of domains or, or brand pillars we should have um, ambition. And actually they chose design technology, and you could say, and knowledge uh, as a kind of a, a supporting aspect as kind of the, the three core pillars of our brand. And that's how we came to that. And later on, uh, I think also with help of Mr. Simon Sinek, uh, asking about what is now your why of Eindhoven, because technology and design are really great to activate uh, or to celebrate as a domain, 
but you still need to find out this, why is it then in our city, in our communities? And then we actually found out that there's this funny word, the word is unconventional. And it's actually the word that designers use. They think unconventional, but also uh, an engineer thinks unconventional eh? because everything is already once has been engineered. So you could say the, the basic of the brand of Eindhoven is that the domains in which we kind of celebrate our brand are design and technology. We have a strong knowledge foundation here with the university and the, and the world famous design academy, Eindhoven. And the mentality is about thinking unconventional, doing things the other way. And we do that in all aspects. So that's a bit, could say, our central idea. And we stuck to that now for already for 12 years. I think that's also really important to do it long and lengthy and surpassing all new politicians that came aboard. And then everybody in the city understands these choices. And it's quite bold, isn't it? I mean, I'm thinking of some other places like Struer, who made a strong statement about being the city of sound. I can see why places might not necessarily have the courage to have a central idea that they might feel is limiting. I can see why people go for those broader values that everybody goes for, because they might feel that being, for example, around design and technology and knowledge stops them being able to be around you know, sport or livability or something else. Why should people have the courage to be more original with their central idea? I think the, the thing with Eindhoven happened is when we started this strategy, the city was actually not doing that well. Uh, economically, they, we had, had big troubles uh, with, you could say, an after effect of a uh, credit crisis, uh, Lehman Brothers. If you're an industrial city, you tend to get hurt much more than more service-oriented uh, industries in your city. So it was actually, there was a good openness in Eindhoven for this kind of bold choice. Yeah? So like, if we do it, we do it well eh? and we do it differently. So that, that was one thing. And yeah, there's also a choice of your own citizens. I think that's the utmost respect that you can have is that your own citizens support you in this, in the discriminating domains. But the real, of course, beauty of it is, is how you translate it actually into projects and how you translate it into events. And some of the things that we did, for example, is we have a marathon in Eindhoven. A lot of cities have a marathon. So we told the marathon people, okay, how are you going to incorporate technology and design in your marathon? And they were like, no, 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 we're going to run a world record. Eh? So we become on television and everybody will write about Eindhoven. And we said, no, that's not what we want. Because in the end, the strategy has to suit a purpose. And the purpose for Eindhoven was to be attractive for high-end engineers, high-end designers, investors, uh, but also students for the academy and for the university to come to Eindhoven. And if you would have typed in Eindhoven in 2010 and 11 in Google, uh, you probably would have closed your computer <laughs> because of the results. Uh, so we really had to change this image by doing things a bit blunt, a bit bold, a bit brave, but for ex especially a bit different than the other cities. So for example, coming back to the marathon, we asked the social designer to actually meddle with the marathon. So how does the medal look like? How's the finish look like? How's the, the visitor experience? How's the runner's experience? We gave the whole city to the runners so they could decorate them with their own texts, eh? their own slogans on the big banners in Eindhoven. And if you do that then for one or two or three episodes, this whole marathon is completely changed. So now they're not running anymore about a fast time. Now they're running for vitality and for sharing and running together with the family and with the kids. And yes, somebody runs the marathon in whatever, two hours and 10 minutes, but that's no longer the purpose. The purpose is one to have to be the world's most innovative marathon. And if you do that well, and you do it on also in other domains, then it kind of creeps in, in everybody, this strategy. And then it's no longer a strategy that's imposed on people, but it's supported by people and by, of course, your other stakeholders in the city, which sometimes you have to do things differently. Yeah. I think it was really interesting, Jose, what you were saying about, you know, to name it is to lose it or something similar to that, to actually saying it out loud breaks yeah. it. And I think it's really noticeable in Eindhoven that you have expressed the brand through events and projects rather than through advertising. And I wonder if, you know, and that's something we're always talking to places about, not because advertising is redundant. Obviously, sometimes advertising has its place, 
and it can all look jolly similar if you're not careful and it's not enough. It's about living the brand as well. And, and do you think it's easier to live the brand if you do have a strong core central idea, Jose? I mean, coming back to even to what you were saying before, Claire, and I think Peter just gave the practical example of this, you know, I don't believe at all that actually central idea or, you know, to have something to aspire to is a limiting thing. On the contrary, I think it provides the focus and you have so much to do within that theme. And actually what is limiting for cities is if you just spread too thin on many things, you know, like the example that Peter was saying, that the practical example of a central idea is exactly what Peter has just explained, which is, okay, how can this marathon activate or can transmit or can make the perception of our uh, core central idea? And, you know, in the case of Eindhoven, when we talk about different, because there's different types of central ideas, right? So you can have like a perception based, which is really a little bit like what uh, Eindhoven uh, did, or even for that matter, Estonia with digital nation, right? Or you may even have identity based, which is Stockholm, for instance, has open minded or emotion based, for instance, Australia has optimism, right? So there's like, there's different for different countries, different cities. You know, there's not only one way of doing things. And you even have a values-based and, and the values-based something that you can really own and achieve, for instance, the case of Costa Rica, which is, but again, it's the only one. Then if everyone tries to, to copy, it becomes too different. But in the end, when we look into this, this notion of central idea and looking into the practical examples, yes, you were mentioning the, the, the fact of advertising is not the way through, but, and it's true, I agree completely. But it's really interesting to see how Eindhoven is the proof of what they've done, which is through, uh, in this case, events, but also you have actions, activities, policies. When you're talking about cities, even urban policies, I'm sure that Eindhoven also, and actually it's a question for you, Peter, aside even from the, the events itself, but really what other things potentially you try to activate that central idea that you have beyond the events. Because in the end is this, is, is beyond communication, is about doing the things uh, and, and be true. And the things you do are aligned to that central idea. I'm very curious to see even what other activities or actions or urban policies or initiatives Eindhoven did that, that are very aligned with that central idea. Now, I think a word that's really fitting with it is integration. So I think I really strive to, with the team to create an integrated strategy. So that's also a strategy. That means also tactics. That means operation eh, so that you get a grip on all these parts of the process. With the uh, municipality, of course, we are a foundation. Eh? We're separate from the municipality. You also have place branders that are part of the municipality. We are a separate foundation. So your position is a bit different. But also the municipality understood that if you eh, have a design focus or a technology focus accompanying that, uh, what does the have the effect on urban planning or what's the effect on even buying your parking meters? Eh? So should you buy the normal parking meter or should you buy the parking meter with a fantastic uh, UI eh, that the designers created or, or a form or some unique technology with that? So it took some time, to be honest, <laughs> a few years, but it gradually it crept in that you have to be on all levels. It has effect on sports and accommodations. Do you have your normal swimming pool or do you have a swimming pool with technology into it so that you can measure what's happening on the water? So it actually worked fantastically, even with the local football club, PSV Eindhoven, they play Champions League level. Also on their training grounds, they play with, with high tech positioning equipment. So all these stories that come out of that are for us really interesting. And so maybe also coming back on, on the notion of advertising, and you could say nowadays it's more earned media versus paid media. So we focus on the earned media. So if somebody else writes in a right magazine, online, offline, or about this city of Eindhoven that does things differently, or that has this strange project, that's for us, of course, very interesting. We had a project in Eindhoven with the university. They built together with a company, a 3D printed house. You could say, what's so special about it? Now, what's special about it? In this 3D printed house, there's actually a, a couple living in that house. It has a postal code. It's just in the street. But at the same time, it's an experiment. 
So what happens? A Guardian, uh, the, the English newspaper, they send over journalists to Eindhoven because there's this, this really special house uh, which was designed uh, in, in a unique way. It's constructed uh, in, a, in a rather special technical uh, solution. But at the same time, it's something very uh, alive because people are living in this house. So they did a great story about this project. I think the Guardian is whatever 200 million online readers. Uh, so these earned media aspects, they can be very beneficial, but you have to invest in the storytelling. People don't remember numbers, they remember stories. So focusing on the stories is important, but you also have to focus on the reach of the story. So if you combine those two, and what also think that we learned, there was also in the beginning quite a discussion. I also looked at other cities, what are they doing, especially the big cities. Eh? They have these, you could say, fantastic buildings, the famous, of course, example of Bilbao and, and Frank Gehry. But if you're a smaller city, you don't have these luxuries <laughs> that you can host such a, a building or host an, an Olympics in my lifetime, or maybe never ever the Olympics will come to Eindhoven. So we found out that playing with time is actually very interesting. So don't do things all year long, do things just one week. And if you do these things for just a very short period, but very intense, like our Dutch Design Week, that actually can create also an international stir. And the beauty of thing that's only a week is you're going to miss it. Eh? And you have to wait 51 weeks for the next episode. Uh, and that actually makes people much more curious than something that's always there. Eh? And, and the next time you see, oh, it's still there. And the third time you think, okay, what's changed? And I think that's the beauty of playing with a city. But not all cities give the, the place branders and the marketeers the room actually to play with their city. And I think it's good that Eindhoven is not a typical, you could say, uh, a romantic medieval building city. Uh, we had actually some um, unwanted refurbishments uh, during uh, the Second World War. But actually, that makes the city a very open city for changes and experiments. And that's actually a thing that we maximized totally for using that in place branding strategy. Real advantage. I mean, that you've given copious reasons why having a core central idea is a good plan. I guess the question I come back to is how do you arrive at that strong core central idea? I mean, you touched on it, Peter, that I'd love to understand, you know, what, what the process was right at the beginning. I don't think you expected this to be your core central idea. I think you mentioned once to me that your mayor was quite surprised by it, but what yeah. was the process of, of asking your residents and of researching and of arriving at that central idea? Yeah, well, the process was actually, okay, we, we skipped the, the value part eh, because we, we thought, okay, that's not the right route to, to go to. So we actually ventured into what are the typical things that are part of a city. Eh? So you want to be a livable city or you want to be a sports city or you want to be a regional city or you want to be a cultural city. So you had all these things a bit like what Jose is saying, if you are do them all, eh, you're spreading the jam all over the, the bread. So that's not what we intended. And we have an Eindhoven a digital panel. So we have 6,000 inhabitants of Eindhoven. They are regularly questioned about policies of the city. And what we actually did, we asked the, this panel to kind of give a rating zero to 10 on three aspects of one of these brand pillars. So we asked them, what do you think yourself? And so your kind of your own opinion. We asked them kind of the image question. What do you think somebody else thinks? Eh? For example, as Eindhoven as a light city. And we asked for them for the ambition. What do you want to be? And what we found out when we looked at the measurements that the things that you would normally would suspect, like Eindhoven in light city, they're, they're all given a number of a seven. Eh? So image seven, identity seven, and ambition seven. But on Design City, Technology City, and Knowledge City, the citizens actually gave it a 9 out of 10 for ambition, but not for what, they, what it was already there in 2010. So actually, to, together with Reachable City, those were the four standing out. They were all going for a 9. And the rest was all like 6.5, 7, 7.5. Seven but we had these three, I would say, outliers because... You can't brand the city as the most reachable city. So we skipped that one. 
but it was an underlying, you could say, uh, hint of our citizens. Uh, please work on our reachability, especially by train and by uh, highway, which Eindhoven has, has uh, trouble with, with them because we are growing really fast, but you don't have really good uh, public transport connections with uh, high-speed railways in uh, in Europe. So we actually picked those three. And uh, yes, yes, you're right. I presented them first to the mayor, who was actually the commissioner of the whole project of place branding in Eindhoven. And then I presented it to the city council. And they were all kind of shocked uh, because they were like, wh why? Why does our citizens make such a bold choice? But I do think it was in line with the sign of the times. If you don't do really well economically, then your citizens also focus on economics. They focus on their maybe their jobs maybe the children also have to they have their education they want to have right internships and if they're not available you get a kind of this worrying society so this focus on what you do really well actually won it i actually even doubt if i would do this research again 12 years later when eindhoven has done so successfully now economically i probably don't think they would focus so much anymore on these specific kind of abstract domains, but it, it really was a really good fit at, uh, at that time. And it was kind of, I, we presented it to the, the city council and we actually made another choice, which was even more blunt. And that was who is then your target audience? Uh, because I think marketeers are always focused on their end user. And uh, so who is your end user? But for a place brand, uh, that end user is maybe not the citizen because the citizen is already there. So why would you market on somebody who's already there? So we very much focused on to get new citizens to Eindhoven, new designers, new engineers, new startups, new students. That was actually the core focus of the strategy. So we presented that to the city council saying, we have prime customers and we have secondary customers. And the secondary customer is the citizen. And of course the politicians were, were shocked and, and a bit mad. But we could explain to them, marketing is an abbreviation of market getting, and you get a market. So the citizens are already there. So it was much more focus needed on brightness to make them proud. And uh, because everybody do this economic doldrums, they were not really happy peppy, you could say. They were a bit shoulders down, chin on, on the chest. And we really wanted to be much more, more bold and brave. But the main focus was actually on acquisition getting new people, internationals, knowledge workers, and that worked fantastically. I think we now have over 12,000 people from India in our city and our, our neighboring cities. And they all came here for top engineering jobs. And they could also go to Austin. They could also go to Silicon Valley. And now they're coming to Eindhoven. And when we, we asked them, how do you know us? And they say, yeah, we know you from The Economist, and we know you from Financial Times, and we know you from The Guardian. So it was a very deliberate focus on these earned media in connection with really specific stories that, that have a, a good reach in international media. And, and also complementing to what Peter is saying, I think, you know, Peter was talking about, and that's really the way in answering your question, Claire. How do you get to that central idea? And, and the challenge is how to exclude everything else. I mean, it's very difficult to focus. It's, and you hear this a lot about, oh, it's very difficult to focus on something because we are many things. And then get a, a common agreement on that from all the different stakeholders is the big challenge. And it's very important to, to understand the exercise of engaging with the citizens and stakeholders to understand what is that core idea, because in the end, we don't want to invent anything. We want to discover. It's not to revolutionize the, uh, may, maybe <laughs> some, some, some exceptions, but the job there is to really understand what is the driving force behind it and how to name it and how to, to make it more tangible or more understandable. And, and also, of course, to understand if this resonates with the audience, the international audience or other audiences uh, within the country. It doesn't have to be from the city, it can be from the country. So for instance, even us, we have a filtering process to understand because you, sometimes you get central ideas that are not really central ideas. You know, they say quality of life, these kinds of things that are not really central ideas. So it helps us to create the filter and, and we put it into a voting system. You know, the example of Eindhoven is a very good one. And for instance, the way that uh, Peter did this evaluation with this panel, we have 
also a similar kind of process where the first question we ask uh, when, when we select the central idea is, is it accepted? Question number one, from one to five, is it accepted? Do you think that the audiences or actually that's the last one, that then this is the most important one, the accepted, but we start with one that is called, is it unique? Is it unique in the sense of, and I know it's a very tricky question because what is unique, but in just to ask, to make people think, is the central idea unique compared to other cities? Do you think you can set apart from the rest? The second question we ask is, is this true? All right. Is it something that is there or is it a wishful thinking? And in the end, it's very difficult because in the end, this can be a transformative project or, or it can be a transition project, right? So we ask, is this true? Do you think that this is really authentic and it, it is in the, you find it in an easy way, let's put it this way, on the streets when we meet someone or when you start a company or when you live there or when you take your kids to school or to a sports event. The third question we ask is, is this relevant to the audiences and domestic and international? But the question I started with, and which is the last one, is really the most important one. Do you think it's accepted, accepted by the citizens? Do you think they will embrace this? And once you have an evaluation of this, you kind of get some, it's another way, it's another method, and, and often did, did their own method, which also I think is a very good one. But this is another, and I, I think what's the right way to assess this, each city has its own filters, each city has its own way of asking, and each city has its own challenges. But it's important to create these questions. It's important to create these questions that make you think, and in the end will help. And also discuss this with the population. It's very important to discuss this with the population so that they understand that's not a slogan. They understand that this, you know, you have to walk the talk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It feels like this is the core thing that makes place branding successful or otherwise. And this is the core challenge that makes place branding a really interesting job, but one, you know, that demands that really special creative way of listening to people and interpreting to people what you've heard, which is a very different process than, oh, I've got this new bar of chocolate and I'm going to think of something sexy to say about it. It, it. It's the thing that I think everyone struggles with, but is what makes the job special. Any last words of advice for our place branding audience on how to arrive at a central idea that will stand you in good stead? I think it's something that really was important for us eh, because say, yeah, Jose is saying this acceptance. Eh? So you could say uh, if you make a really bold choice, like in our case, this technology design, it doesn't sound very uh, warm hearted <laughs> to put it mildly. So to win everybody over, you also sometimes have to say, translate it, let's say in a logical way. So for example, the thing that we used also to the city council was this difference between on-brand and off-brand. Yeah, so they were wondering, oh my God, should now also our carnival be on the technology and design? And also should now our neighborhood event also be... Oh, no, no, no. So we focus on the technology design when it's actually the thing that really has an impact on the strategy. So luring people uh, in, in a positive way to Eindhoven. So we came up with this a notion of the comparison, like what's in the shopping window and what's in the store. Yeah, so... Things can be very differently that are in the shopping window. Yes? That's probably your own brand. And in the store, you have all your products and all your offerings and all your services. And they are for everybody. You cater literally for everybody. But the things that in the shopping window, that's actually, they raise the attention eh? of maybe new citizens, of media, of other stakeholders that are relevant that you want to address in this case. And this simple comparison with the store window actually helped a lot. Also in this political kind of acceptance, like, oh, now suddenly our place branding organization makes her such a strong and bold move that aren't they forgetting the normal people? No, we're not forgetting the normal people because in the end, the more budget goes to the carnival event than to the Dutch Design Week. But the Dutch Design Week raises interest from all kinds of people all over the world that specifically come for that week to Eindhoven. And the carnival is the livability part that gives people stay in our city. I really wanted to share the, the knowledge that after doing this for, I think, 10 years, we actually, we made a huge pivot. And I would say we stopped with technology design, but we incorporated the, the livability part and the staying part is now much more vital in the strategy than the acquisition part. 
mm-hmm. because the businesses are now saying, okay, we're now doing really well. Huh? We have a company here that's that's most valuable company now in all of Europe. When I started, that camp- the company was in huge trouble. Now the most valuable company of all Europe, ASML. And the ASML people are saying, please let them stay, these people that came to Eindhoven. So mm-hmm. you, don't, yeah. you don't focus anymore on acquisition. Now you focus on more on staying and then you use technology and design as means, as instruments to stand out and that they feel great in the city for a longer period to be here. That makes sense. And that final piece of advice from you, Jose? Well, I think whenever you go for the central idea, make sure you select the central idea that you can really, like I said, walk the talk. But at the same time, it needs to be somehow a little bit aspirational a little bit in the sense that keeps you on the, on the drive. I mean, it's something that it's there and you can push it a little bit. Otherwise it's just like, okay, so why we're we doing this in the end, right? So it's something that needs to be there, but it, it needs to be a little bit pushing and, and taking the city or the country out of their comfort zone. And it's really to take it seriously in the sense that Peter is talking about step seven already of the 14 steps to nation branding and also to place branding, which is to be on brand because in the end, that's it. It's like, is this central idea, how do I activate this in everything we do or on the selected things that I really want to do? Uh, and in the end, that's what the on and off brand filters are going to be here for and which is the next step. Excellent. Well, well that's a good point to end on because um, otherwise I think we could probably chat all day. Um, but thank you very much, Peter, for joining us for this session and for sharing what you've learned from your time with Eindhoven. Um, really, really interesting. And thank you, Jose, for giving us that broader perspective as well. That's the end of this episode. But we look forward to the next one, as you say, which will be about being on brand. Join us to that. <laughs>